everybody would be empowered to take care of themselves. And if everybody felt empowered that way, uh, it, it changes everything. It changes everything. And there's nobody, not as, not as easy a possibility for people to have power over. You know, it's, you're empowered and... But there's a spectrum of techniques. So at the bottom of it, there are techniques that anyone can do and they're going to be helpful in a general way. Then as the techniques get more sophisticated, it really requires a practitioner that is well-trained to really make an assessment of where the energies are not flowing, where the energies are blocked, what needs to be done to get them into their optimal condition. Oh my goodness, USU family. I we've already I've already been having the best conversation with with Donna and David and I have to say that we realized we should press record because there is so much to talk about. It's such a gift to have you both here. I love both of you. I love your work. I believe in it. And I'm just so excited because I know anybody and everyone who is going to tune in and watch this at some point is going to be blessed, be blessed by what you, ha what are, what you're teaching. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. We're so happy to be here. <laughs> Yay. I think for those that don't know much about energy medicine, um, the power of the energy in our body, this feels like a little bit of a like 101 question, but there are people that I know are tuning in that are like, I've heard of it. I don't really understand how it works. Can we kind of start at the, the beginning a little bit? I know that you've done like many, many years of work in this. So to just kind of talk for a minute about what is energy medicine, you're both of your coming into this work. Donna, I know you had this gift when you were younger of, of seeing energy and maybe to even talk about how did you find yourself in this, in this whole beautiful world of energy medicine? Okay. Well, first, I just want to say energy is the life force. It's the life force. It it is all of us. I mean, energy is all there is. So I think that everyone at some time, if you're just open to life, you will find yourself in it, you know, so at least touching into energy medicine. But Physical matter is congealed energy. It's just energy at a slower vibration. Right, right, right. So, um, yeah, I thought everybody saw energy. It never occurred to me that people didn't see energy. Um, that was just, that was what was natural to me and my mother and my brother and sister. And so, um, yeah, but I, it never occurred to me to use it as in any kind of healing way until, but it did help me get through life just to see the energies of what was around somebody and the colors and the vibration and the often geometrical shapes, you know, said so much. It was a language. I really I feel that energy is the language that your body speaks. It speaks energy. And, um, but I got, I, I grew up with all sorts of ailments and I, when I was uh, maybe in the first week of life, I had a very high fever and they think that maybe I burned off any capacity to make enzymes. Certain so, enzymes. What kind? Certain enzymes. Yeah. So I could not process food at all. And I couldn't, anything that grew out of the ground, I was allergic to. And so it just was very, very strange. I didn't have a cookie till I was in the seventh grade. But, you know, something sugary and sweet. Because my mother was so afraid about what could she feed me. And, um, and then I got asthma. I, uh, somewhere around those years. And then I got multiple sclerosis at 16. And that was the one that just sort of stopped me in my tracks on some level. It was, but I, I didn't, I didn't know the name of it at the time. I found out later what I had, but I just thought, I just didn't want to talk about it to anybody because I knew that you didn't want to live in in illness. You didn't want to live in illness. You wanted to uh, talk about everything that was fine. And I so believed in, uh, in, in energy that it was all going to be okay. But it wasn't okay. And, and so I, by the time in my early 20s, I was starting not to be able to walk. And my, I was, my whole face and around my mouth especially 
had gotten numb, so I had a hard time talking, and um, and my fingers didn't work, and my toes didn't work, and so, uh, but, uh, and then at 27, I had a heart attack. And yes. because all her organs were breaking down because of the MS. Oh, wow. yeah. I didn't know this. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So, well, I had two little girls to raise and went, and I went to see five different specialists to see if they could help me. And none of them could. In Western medicine, there was no cure for this. And so, um, and the fifth doctor said that, I really felt like I was struck by lightning. Oh, then I will heal myself. I'll just have to heal myself. <laughs> so, and and I did. I started. I started just uh, experimenting with the energies in my own body. Just what would make energy connect and move, and and that then be able to move well. And and I just I got better and better at it. First, though, I lost my my allergies. Oh, my allergies went away, and that was shocking. And so there's all these different levels of energy in a body and illnesses. And so that was the first one to go. And and then the numbness around my mouth went away, and everything began to have vitality and aliveness again. And when I finally got well, I wanted to teach it to everybody. I wanted to, and it wasn't to teach anything about multiple sclerosis. I wanted people to know that they could heal themselves, that they were not stuck, that they could, that, that, that we evolved with this ability to heal ourselves. And I'm sure our ancient ancestors, this was their way. They had to be able to move the energy and heal ourselves. So in those, two, it took her about two years to be free of symptoms. And what you couldn't see was she was showing how, she would put one hand on the top of her thigh and one hand over her knee where things were numb and hold it until she would feel the connection. Yeah. And so that was the first discovery. And then she would figure out how to use that principle to other parts of her body. And then she would figure out other ways of moving the energy so that in those two years, she developed a whole system for really working with the body's energies and getting them to uh to the state in which they need to be for the body to work correctly you know i've never been sorry that i went through that and it was it was tough years those years <laughs> but i've never been sorry i went through it because i think that that was my journey to yeah. to, to heal myself and 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 you learn so much when you have to do it for yourself and nobody tells you how and so um yeah that I, I think I was rather obnoxious sometimes with people because I just wanted to, when I see somebody's energy, now I, I suddenly was it was making sense. Energies that had different looks in them, meant different illnesses or different vitalities or different, all sorts of things. So I sometimes, you know, just wanted... It's about like helping hands. I like to share with everybody. <laughs> and, uh, but it was it was really good, and I even had a practice that if it didn't work, you didn't have to pay me. So I was very sure of what I was doing. <laughs> wow, wow! I, I didn't know your story that you. I didn't know the illnesses that you had suffered with. It almost what comes through to me is it's like you being used in your in your quest to heal that's where you got this beautiful, yeah. powerful teachings that yeah. you learned yourself that now, I mean, I know you've worked with millions of people. This work has helped and healed millions. Yes. Yes. And, 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 it, and what is so amazing is that I, I don't have the quite the right words, but you can simplify it. You can simplify it that, that all human beings can move their energies all human beings can make something better in their body. And I really believe that little children should be taught this in kindergarten. You know, it's like it should be taught so everybody would know and everybody would be empowered to take care of themselves. And if everybody felt empowered that way, uh, it, it changes everything. It changes everything. And there's nobody, not as, not as easy a possibility for people to have power over. You know, it's... You're empowered, and but there's a spectrum of techniques. So at the bottom of it, there are techniques that anyone can do, and they're going to be helpful in a general way. 
then as the techniques get more sophisticated, it really requires a practitioner that is well-trained to really make an assessment of where the energies are not flowing, where the energies are blocked, what needs to be done to get them into their optimal condition. Yeah. I have so many thoughts and questions this happens to me. I'm going to, I'm going to make a note because they're coming in. I, I am curious because many, uh, to just ask you about for a moment, many of our beloved listeners are highly sensitive empath empaths connect, you know, either connected to their intuition, working on connecting to their intuition. And I am curious just to talk about general energy hygiene and kind of managing our energy. For those of us who are sensitive, who are empathic, maybe not to the level you have done, uh, like seeing it or, but also like feeling it. And, and, and especially with, you know, we live in a dynamic world that might be a really <laughs> good way to say there's a lot happening Maybe for a moment, just to talk about what are some, and I think David, you were just saying there's some basic practices that someone right now listening who may not know of a practitioner yet, although we'll have all that information because I will share later, I've been working with one of your trained practitioners who's been life-changing. Um, but for those of us who are sensitive that, how, what can we start to do? What would be some well, techniques? That's a great question because part of Donna's gift is that sensitivity and it is for better or for worse. It makes her a good healer, <laughs> but it also made her vulnerable to all those conditions. And her energies are so sensitive. So, um, so lots of people in the spiritual realm will say, strengthen your aura. But strengthening your aura is just an idea until you have techniques that really allow you, give, show you, give you a map for strengthening your aura. But I'll just say one more thing, and then you can. And through that, but what I've observed in Donna is she is extraordinarily sensitive to minor changes, micro changes in her energies. So she has to 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 keep herself in top form. She has to use her own tech, the techniques she's developed. So she wakes up in the morning, and her spleen meridian is really feeling weak. If she ignores that. Then, <laughs> then it goes downhill. If she does something very simple to get it into a good flow, then the day goes well. So it's it's a gift and a challenge to have that sensitivity. Yeah. But everybody that you're talking to in your audience that has it, it is a gift. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say. It's a gift. And I am amazed how many people are a, little, a bit frightened about it. But if you really learn energy your body you will have the tools to be able to adapt to whatever is coming your way i mean i was supposed to be gone in my 30s and i would not live past that and i'm 81 now and i, <laughs> I, and, I and i really love this age i love this age who would have ever told me that this would be a great age to be alive and it's just it's it, your body your body learns to adapt and shift and evolve as you uh, get as you welcome that sensitivity and learn to work with it. So I really love that. And I am so proud of my daughter. <laughs> oh, I'm just going to put a plug. We have people that listen, and some, you know, many, many, many that will watch this as well. We'll have it on YouTube and and, and upload it a lot of places. You got to check this out. I just had a like my jaw just hit the floor. I and I should have thought because wow, you've been teaching this for many years, and I was thinking maybe sixties, maybe. But then it hit me that wouldn't that doesn't add up. I mean, you the first I just I have to say you're walking both of you like we got on to to this this beautiful conversation together, and I was like just struck by the energy, your your powerful radiant light energy, and so. This this is something we need to all pay attention to, friends. Seriously, go check this out because you're going to be shocked when you see Donna and she just said she's 81. I'm sorry. I just have to say I had a moment. I'm going to pull myself back together. Hold that. Wow. I, want to say, I want to say that um, wow. learning energy medicine will, will um, 
support you all your life, but boy, it will help your aging process so that you actually like aging. It is not a negative thing. It's a positive thing. And uh, it's, it's just really important. I mean, it is wonderful to learn this. <laughs> so wonderful. And so needed in a culture that is so obsessed yes. with, I don't even love to use the term anti-aging because I think when you put that anti, it, it just, yes. it's, yes. you know, versus I think of it like, you know, fine wine or something that, you know, just <laughs> blossoms and gets better and better. And this is, this is part of why I'm so excited. And also to talk to you about energy medicine. Well, in a moment, a little bit, talk about your new book, Tapping, because these are really, really important easy to do. There are practices that we can all do that you're doing that, I mean, shows, it shows you can't, you can't lie with your energy is what I'm hearing and what I'm seeing. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you can't take your energy. I, you know, in terms of, so you developed this whole system and for someone, I think we started to talk about it for someone who doesn't yet know the different meridians. Cause I have to say, I, I've been very blessed. I've been attending and I was telling you this both before some classes over the last few years with some of your most incredible trained facilitators and, and, and trained practitioners and teachers. And I remember I was like, Oh, I don't know this, the like, what would be the large intestine meridian? I'm not sure. I, I think I got it. So for someone who's like a beginner, are there some techniques that you would recommend or just for everyone to do for well-being and vitality? Gosh, there's a whole bunch of them, but I'll tell you a really, really simple one is the hookup that I'm sure you know. Yes. You put one finger in your belly button, push it in and pull it up, put the other finger of your other hand just uh, above the nose right there, which is called the third eye, uh, and push in both, pull them up, and it'll probably make you breathe. And if you breathe into your nose and out through your mouth, you also engage your vagus nerve. You, uh, you open up the circulation in your head and down your spine and through your whole body. What this is, um, these are two meridians that hook up, central that goes up the front, governing that goes up the back, and they affect every meridian in your body, every meridian, every chakra, every everything, and it creates a microcosmic orbit that goes around your body that then puffs out your aura further, and you're just more protected, taken care of, and you're you're in you're you're, you're hooked up to just your natural healing abilities. And yeah. Wow. Donna, can you see that in somebody like if before they do it and when they, after they do it, I'm just, I'm sorry. I'm so curious, like the yeah. ability to see that what's happening. Yes. But can I, I would like to say something about seeing energies before I go to this. I really feel that all human beings when they are born can see energy. And, but it tends to go away in the first year of life if you're not using it. And we're learning so much in that first year. And if, you're, and, and if you don't have adults or somebody around to keep talking about it, it tends to go dormant. And I just had a mom who always talked about energy. And so it was, you just, it never went dormant. And, I, and one of the things that I've seen in my classes that every now and then somebody who's been studying for a while will suddenly say, oh, I see, I see energy, I see that. You know, and it's really exciting and fun. It's just turning it back on again. And that's, that's part of sensitivity. And so it's, um, so, okay, now what did you ask? <laughs> well, it comes, it comes in to people, to our students, the, the first way or the most common way it comes in is they start to feel it. Yeah. It will be yeah have their hands over somebody and they'll suddenly know that they're feeling heat or they're feeling movement or they're feeling stuckness. But we have five sensory channels, we do sensory channels and it can come into any of those. Seeing energy is actually, I think, overrated. <laughs> um, our, our, our students really want to see the energy, but um, for Donna, she feels it and sees it. And if there's a contradiction, yeah. she trusts what she feels more than what she sees. So. Yeah. 
it's so the feeling the energy is really the the kind of benchmark for for most people in terms of getting more sensitive to as healers I, I love this conversation so much. We talk a lot here about intuition and trusting yourself and trusting what you're feeling and sensing. And it just, it goes back to where we're just, you're, you're bringing up the point that we're born with these beautiful, powerful gifts. And I love what you said, Donna. It's like, it's all there. It's there for all of us. This is what I, I'm feeling the need to say to our beloved listener. Like this is in you, you are born with this. And that's why- Yes. And so back to your question of, well, what if I don't know how to name the meridians or where they're flowing? And you mentioned our book. And, um, you know, I got into energy medicine through marriage. <laughs> nice. We've been together for 47 years. So uh, I've got to get you in a while. And, uh, but I, you know, we were talking earlier how um, you're in Maryland and I, my first seven years of my career were in the medical school at Johns Hopkins. So I had a fairly conventional understanding of energy, you know, and energy chain is the capacity to do work. Energy has these very defined properties. And then I meet this guy who is really saying, no, no, energy has memory. Energy has intelligence. Energy knows how to heal you. It's not just this flow of something that can do work and make an impact on physical structures. It actually does a mind of its own. And so I thought that's a really strange idea. Can <laughs> <laughs> you imagine the dinner tables discussions early in our life? <laughs> But, but I'm a clinical psychologist, and psychologists pay attention to the data and to, you know, and, and so I'm watching people talk, like her office was across an alleyway from mine. So my office is here, hers is here, and sometimes I would refer someone to her, she'd refer someone to me. And what I had to notice was the people I referred to her were getting better. <laughs> and in ways that I didn't know how to help them. And I also had to notice that people were coming from all over the world to get help with difficult conditions. And very often there would be a mini miracle that, that happened. That's something that Western medicine wasn't able to correct. She was able to correct. So I became a believer. And um, but I, I was not an easy sell. And um, <laughs> my, my, well, so the way, so, so, but tapping is very different from the whole of energy medicine. Energy medicine is this large area where we work with at least nine different energy systems. People are familiar with the chakras and the meridians and the aura and six others that Donna sees and teaches her students how to work with. So it's it's a fairly complex field. That's why our certification program is two full years of really intense uh, learning. Um, people can keep their day jobs, but it's it's really a big commitment beyond beyond what they their basic responsibilities. So um, <clears throat> tapping is a form of energy psychology, and it's not just tapping; it's tapping along with psychological procedures that you use and in tapping, you're not learning nine energy systems. You're learning just one, the meridians. And you're not only learning just one, you're learning only 12 points, 12 acupuncture points that are on those meridians. And that is easy to memorize. That is something that when you've done it four or five times, you start to have a body memory of how to do it. You're just tapping it on these points. And it's that fast. And you do it while you're making statements. And so it's, um, it's, it's very efficient and effective, and anyone can do it. Now, it looks strange. And when I first was introduced to it, I was um, doing, a, uh, doing a supervision group for other therapists. Uh, many of them were you know, psychologists or social workers who were needing to pick up their um, 1,500 hours of supervised experience. So 
I was in that role, and there was a number of other therapists that were more experienced, just wanting a place to talk about their cases. And one of the students, one of the people in the group, the participants, um, had yearned about this tapping stuff. And she starts talking about it in the group. And I am going, oh, come on. You know, you really <laughs> need this? Are you kidding me? Because the new research at the time, this is 1998, 1999, no, not a single study. And as I said, psychologists pay attention to data. There was no research that looked weird. There was no explanation. What <laughs> in the world? How does this help? You know, it's really, and so I was, you know, I was professional. I didn't put her down, but I did everything I could to steer her away from talking about this in my group. Sifted. And uh, I was very judgmental in myself. And, you know, when you're judgmental like that, often you get to eat it. So <laughs> here I am talking about navigating this <laughs> the, the way The way that it happened, do we have time for me to talk a little bit about how I got into it? Oh, absolutely. And and I want to go through the 12 points. I'm just going to like show if you if I have it earmarked. This book is no joke. This book is incredible. It is like if you want to learn how I mean I just I I have to be honest, I'm still making my way through it because it's so it's so much fantastic user-friendly material. So please please share and and sh and all of it. And we'll get to the 12 points because I want people to learn that too. Yeah. <laughs> They're on the and people don't need to read the whole book to get it. It's right. really organized so that it can go to whatever is important for you, whatever, whether it's anxiety or depression or PTSD or relationships or peak performance. But, okay, so um, so what happens is it's Don and I, are, I'm helping Don write a book, Energy Medicine, and after we finish that, we go on the road and we're giving workshops and about 15% of the people that come to Donna's classes um, are therapists. And so they start asking me about this energy psychology, this tapping. Also, the you know, most popular form is EFT or emotional freedom techniques. And I don't know what to think about it. I just know <laughs> my first impressions were pretty negative. And I, so <laughs> in that position, you can, you, know, you can kind of show how little you know and challenge them and say there's nothing to it. Or you can have the good sense to not say that and <laughs> just kind of listen, or you can uh, learn something about it. And um, it's kind of when the need to learn something, this teacher appears, we were doing a weekend workshop that ended at um, at lunchtime, and one of the psychologists in the group um, said, I know you're a psychologist, and I, I wonder if you'd like to come as my guest to a meeting that's being held tonight. The psychologists in our little town uh, all get together once a month. And this evening, the presentation is about energy psychology. And so I go, oh, God, you know, here it is. <laughs> okay, well, psychologists are interested in enough to have a presentation on it. Maybe there's more to it than I realize. So off I go with my skeptic. <laughs> and um, the way that they had set it up was that the therapist, one of the therapists had been studying thought field therapy, which was the granddaddy of EFT as a derivative of thought field therapy. And he um, had offered to the other psychologists in the group that if one of them had a client that really was not responding, that they could bring that person in and he'd work with them using this new tapping therapy. So so that was the setup. There's about a dozen psychologists in somebody's living room and they set it up so that the therapist, the, the therapist doing the demo and the client are in the middle of the room and everybody else is in a circle around them. So I'm watching it. And the first question the therapist asked makes a lot of sense to me. He's asking for her history with, with her um, symptoms. And her symptom is that she is terrified of closed spaces. She has severe claustrophobia. She cannot ride in an elevator. She cannot, if she has to take a trip, she has to check the truck driver mat, mat, maps to make sure that there isn't a long tunnel. So she won't be in a long tunnel. She just can't. So it's really affecting your life. So she's describing that this has happened for as long as she can remember. And she's 
you know, through a couple of rounds of therapy and with no progress. So I'm thinking, okay, well, these are good questions. It's not very <laughs> often weird. And then he asks her to, you know, imagine being in an elevator and give it a rating of zero to channel you after distress. She has, and that's a technique that's used in many forms of therapy. I, I was practicing um, systematic desensitization is used there. It's called the sub rating, um, subjective units of distress. You're a can, okay, makes sense. But then he yeah. has her starting doing these really weird incantations, <laughs> tapping fear of elevators, fear of elevators, fear of elevators, fear, I'm thinking, oh my God. He's <laughs> just, just given her post hypnotic suggestions to deepen her fear of elevators. <laughs> what is he doing? This is malpractice. This is difficult. And so she gets through a round of that tapping and then these other things that are even stranger where she's moving her eyes in circles and she's counting and humming. And I'm going, oh my God, this is really, you know, this is, this is, I have to report this in the ethics court. And but then after about two minutes of this, not a long time, he asked her to go back into her imagination of the elevator and you could rating. And now it's down from a ten down to a seven. What happened there? And then another round and another rating and it's down to a five. And I think, okay, this is probably some version of the Stockholm effect where she's really <laughs> identifying with the therapist and she doesn't want to embarrass him in front of his colleagues. <laughs> but then another round of gapping and she's back up to a seven. And I'm going, oh, I know it would work. So it's just, these are just fluctuations you get when you do it in front of the crowd. But the therapist didn't stop there. He says, um, well, you know, went up to a seven, what was going on in your mind? And she said, well, I just flashed on this memory. I haven't had decades where I was maybe about eight and I was playing with my brothers and they were, they, they and their friends had this big appliance box and one of us would get in and the others would push it. And it was great fun. And then it was my turn. They pushed me, but then they pushed me against the wall. The only opening on the box was pushed against the wall and she didn't have enough weight to move things or to get out of it as they went off making fun of her and just left her there. And so there she is in total darkness, doesn't know how to get out, and she starts screaming and screaming and screaming. And now she's clearly up to a can as she's describing it and really actually she's reliving it. And so um <clears throat> I'm thinking, okay, okay, this is this is clinically useful. This is really important information that now the therapist that's treating her every week after maybe four or five months of talk therapy, she will no longer have this fear of closed spaces. She'll have worked through all the different, you know, parts of it, her anger towards her brother, all of that. Well, the therapist didn't stop her. He goes, okay, we'll just continue. So, so as she gets her calmed down a little bit, he gets her tapping on her absolute terror of being in that dark place. Terror of this, this memory, and she's changing the wording now each time to really make it specific to what her experience was. And then he gets it down from really high up, she didn't even give it a rating, down to zero. And then he goes to different aspects of it. So he works on her resentment and betrayal by her brothers and works on her her anger about all the ways that this has inhibited her life and it gets all of these down to zero and it doesn't take that long I mean, it's like a half hour the whole demonstration and then he brings it back to fear of elevators which last time it was rated was a seven now it's down to a three and he does a couple more rounds of tapping and it's down to a zero well as i said psychologists like to test things and so Somebody says, you know, we're in a living room, and so they said, well, what if she walks into the hall closet? There's a coat closet there and closes the door. So the therapist is very <laughs> sensitive. He says, you're not trying to prove anything to anyone. We don't want to re-traumatize you. If you get all uncomfortable, you just open that door and walk out. Are you okay with that? And she says, yeah, I'll do that. So into the door, she, into the closet, she walks, closes the door, and about half a minute goes by and all watching a minute 
And you imagine a dozen psychologists all hovering around this hot <laughs> river. And I don't know how long it was, but it seemed like a really long time, maybe three minutes. And the therapist knocks on the door and says, are you okay? And she opens the door and steps out and she's exuberant. She said, like, no fear, no anxiety. And she, she just can't believe it. So everybody is congratulating her and congratulating the therapist, except me. See that I got it. I got it. I know so well. This is a social psychology experiment to see how gullible psychologists are going to be. <laughs> but it wasn't. You know, I've experienced analogous situations where in a single session, somebody overcomes a phobia that they've filled on to for decades. So it's, um, so that, that, that was the pivotal moment that got me to take training in this and just changed my whole career. So for 30 years, I didn't have a capping for the last 23 years I have. And it's just makes, it's like turbo charging. I still use other techniques. It's not like it replaces what you know. In fact, the book that you just held up, what it was, there's more than a hundred books on capping. And we, one of the ways this book is different is that rather than just say, here's the, here's a capping technique, it says, here are the best practices psychology has to offer for dealing with overcoming habits, for dealing with addictions, for dealing with depression. Here's the best tools psychology has. Here's how to bring tapping in to those best tools. So it really is not just a tapping book. It's really a psychology book that focuses on tapping. Hi. I'm so grateful you shared that story. It's one of my questions to follow. And one of the things I noticed, um, what I personally found, I mean, there's there's so much in here and you're right. You, If you're struggling with anxiety or, or you want peak performance, you mentioned, there's just, I mean, you have so many different places to play. Um, I loved that you also gave examples of what you could say while you're tapping, like if you're having anxiety, or I think uh, I'd written this down, um, every, you know, you talked about the 40 trillion cells in your body kind of working together. I loved this one. Every little cell in my body is happy. Every little cell in my body is well, like that could be a morning, you know, starting and doing your tapping. You, there's just, it's like a candy shop of tapping for everybody. It's just got everyone covered. Um, David, you, I am curious, I, for someone who can get stuck, I think we also attract a lot of like recovering left brainers here, like people that were, you know, really like I got my degree in this and I'm understanding it logically and it makes sense. So for those that have tried just the talk therapy, um, or, you know, it sounds like you had a little, a, a little bit of feeling like, I'm not sure this is going to work. And that, that like, what is this? You know, that, that uh, I'm forgetting the word, but you know what I mean? That like, not sure about this. Can you explain what is happening at the, at the, at the body, the cellular, the brain level when we add in, and Donna too, either of you would love to explain for everybody. Cause I know my, there's that part of me that's like, how does this happen? This feels like magic. This feels like magic. How does it actually work? Because you're in the tapping, you're, you're first of all, saying things like I would have thought you never want to say, you know, my fear of elevators or my anxiety. It's going to. So how is this working? Can you like debunk it for us? Right. So, so, so that's a great question. I think that nobody that does their first tapping session believes it's going to work. It's just so counterintuitive that this will make a difference. So, it's, but then it works. And so it's in that surprise that the cells start to reorganize themselves. But what happens is actually um, quite understandable that when you're capping on acupuncture points, acupuncture points have a particular electromagnetic sensitivity. And these points also have, like all of your cells, they have certain large molecules which when they are tapped on when pressure is applied to them they convert the mechanical pressure to electricity to electrical signals this this is well known so piezoelectricity the process is called mechanosensory transduction that's from physics and biology so um so so you tap and a 
impulse, an electrical impulse is generated. Now, what do those electrical impulses do? They need to get to areas where they can make a difference in the person's... Okay, so where they go is very interesting. It's that, you know, like when the woman is saying fear of elevators or imagining fear of elevators, her amygdala, her limbic system, her emotional system goes into a threat response just any time that somebody has a phobia and thinks about whether the phobic object, even if they're not in the situation, it starts that whole thing. So the brain goes into this reaction. Meanwhile, these impulses that were generated by the tapping are attracted to the area of the brain that's been activated. So boom, they go, and they go along the body's connective tissue. That's where the meridians are. Meridians were a mystery because nobody could find them, but it turns out they're embedded in the connective tissue, which has collagen, which is a semiconductor. So it's electrical. So they just go up to this area of the brain that's been activated, and the acupuncture, these signals give deactivating messages. So the imagery has put you into activation. The tapping deactivates, so it brings it down, it brings the activation down. So now the person is able to think of the elevator and think of being in it without the body going into the reaction, without going into that fear response, without reliving emotionally that experience. Even if they don't remember the original earlier experiences, they're in it again. And that's what that's the cause of a lot of emotional problems. So Hey, my friend, I just wanted to pop in really quickly and let you know that I have now opened the doors to my newest spiritual membership, The Sanctuary. If you're looking to truly learn how to follow the signs, connect to your spirit guides, harness and trust your intuition, become more magnetic so you can attract your partner, your soul fit clients, whatever your heart desires, come check out The Sanctuary. Go to julierieslercom slash sanctuary. And I wanted to share, I have a very special gift and coupon for you, my YouTube family. Make sure you use the code sanctuary YouTube. That will give you the first month for free so you can try it. You can cancel it anytime. And I would love to meet you and connect with you. And yes, I will be leading intuitive guided messages every single month live and giving personal messages. This will be such a high vibe, amazing community and opportunity to truly access your intuition and your USU. Okay, back to the show. Love you. So it's obvious in PTSD where people have flashbacks, but it also happens in relationships where one partner triggers the other. So it goes into an emotional response. So it, it's in all all walks of life that this happens. So that's that's one half of it. The other half of it is that where the the um, brain also goes into problem solving mode. So signals go into towards that mode, and it will increase activity where it is needed. There's something about the acupuncture points that do what the body needs. So if the person is trying to figure out how to manage distress, that problem-solving activity gets increased or, managed, or, or um, needing to do planning around a situation, that planning ability gets increased. So you have these signals that the tapping generates that both activate when it needs to be activated and deactivate where it needs to be deactivated. So that's a very quick summary of what I think happens. And I'll ask one more thing. I just, I mean, that's enough what he has said, but what, what is, what I can see is like, if he's tapping right here, I mean, first of all, you see that spark, electricity, you see the spark and then the pulsing makes that energy just go straight up to the brain you can see it pulsing all the way up and it begins to pulse with your heartbeat so it's like really magical and like it's always been around and 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 i'm so glad it's being found now um and again in energy medicine um probably tapping for pain has gone back thousands and thousands of years. You tap and it moves 
it, so it'll do both. It'll do the psychological, emotional things. It'll do physical things. So, but it's very much there, and it will also be in different colors and different intensities as it pulses. So, it's fun. It's just magical. <laughs> You know, I'm remembering, I, I may have shared, shared this on this show before, when I was about six or seven, it's funny because I'm like, oh my goodness, I didn't know what I was doing. I, when I would get, I think to soothe myself after I stopped sucking my thumb, I, right here, <laughs> I remember my sister kind of made fun of me. She'd be like, what are you like we would do it. Like I did this all the time. It was like, I remember I would sometimes be a little bit like you were saying, David, I'm like, this must look weird. Like once I got more self-conscious, I would do it like, so people couldn't see it or by myself, but I'm realizing just innately, I, for whatever reason, that was the space right here where it was very soothing for me. And I still notice, you know, that's a space, even though and we'll, we can go through the 12 points. It's like, that is my, that's where I go when I'm needing soothing. It's fascinating. Uh, I, love that. I love that. That makes all the yeah. sense in the world. Plus you're, you're just right here at the heart chakra. And I just think, yes, that's perfect. <laughs> just didn't even know. I just remember being like, what is, I know it looks weird, but it felt so good. It felt so, it felt, it's soothing. Can we um, go through, I know this is just, and it's in here, actually, I earmarked. Uh, let's see if I got the, well, it might be hard to share, but there's a page here that really show. I mean, you've got so much here. I think it's, I don't know if people are going to be able to see this, but we could go through the points so people can come yeah. away and, and get started and use it. Yeah. <clears throat> um, okay. Let me think for a moment. <laughs> and this book, by the way, like, it does a beautiful job. You, I, I don't know how long this took. How long did it take you to put this together? Because I, it feels like this must have taken decades. So <laughs> much. Well, it's, so much it's our second book on tapping. So our first one was in 2005. Yeah. And this one, when we actually sat down to write it, from when we sat down to write it till we got a final draft, was about two years. And one of the reasons that it took so long was that we had test drivers because we knew that the techniques work if we're one-on-one -on -one or even in a group, but we never really tried it and tested it with people that are just getting it from a book. So we got a group of people that were experienced tappers and a group of people, the most important group, the biggest group, were people that had never done tapping before <clears throat> so that we could really see that they can benefit from the book. And um, so... Um, so there's there's a dozen points that I'm going to lead you through. And when I said, let me think for a minute, what I wanted to think of is what I would say. So I'm going to, as I tap, I will, because I guess some people just hearing the audio, I'll describe where I'm tapping, and then I'll say a, a sentence or a phrase, and you repeat it. So um Donna and Julie, you you repeat it so people will okay. I'll say it and you know. Okay, yeah. <laughs> we got you. We're doing it. We're gonna do okay. it. So at the top of the head, top of the head, center, top, just tapping, and you tap um just firmly but not hard enough to hurt yourself in any way. So, <laughs> so I'm exploring this tapping stuff. I'm exploring this Inside of the eyebrows. It looks kind of strange. It looks kind it's of kind strange. Of strange. <laughs> but Julie's, I, but I trust Julie. But I trust Julie. <laughs> it's on the outside of the eyes. So, so that's the outside of the eyes. Then under the, on the cheekbone, under the eyes. Huh? And so I'm giving it a whirl. So I'm giving it a whirl. Under the, whirl. Whirl. <laughs> under the nose, the okay, lip, and I don't know what it's doing. I don't know what it's doing. What it's doing. <laughs> and under the lower lip, but at least I'm finding that it's easy to do. At least I'm, at least finding, I'm finding it's easy, easy to do. do. And now on the collarbone, if you come in to 
the edge of the collarbone and then just go right under it, just right under the collarbone corners. <clears throat> so um, I'm already halfway through this. I'm already, already halfway. halfway through this. I don't feel ridiculous. I don't feel ridiculous. Because <laughs> no one can see that I'm doing it. No one can see that I'm doing it. <laughs> And now we're under the heart chakra, which is the center of the chest. And according to this expert guy, I'm reducing my distress. According, according to this expert, expert guy, I am reducing my stress. My distress. <laughs> Yay. And sides of the rib cage, I'm, I'm helping myself be more calm. I'm helping myself. And whether I believe it or not, <laughs> whether I believe, I believe it or not, he says it's happening. He says it's happening. It's happening. And now, in be on the seam of the outside of your pants, um, just between the knee and the um, hog, just yeah, that's right. Um, so I didn't even start with with the problem. So I didn't even start no problem. <laughs> and now tapping the sides of your hands. So I don't know if my problems have any, got any, gotten any better. I don't know if my problems got any better. And now between the ring finger and the little finger, there's a ridge that goes beneath the knuckles and just with four fingers of the other hand tap there. Mm. So even though I don't know if this is doing any good. So even though I don't know if this is doing any good. At least it's kind of fun. At least it's, at least kind, it's kind of fun. It's not how I usually think of therapy. That's how I usually think nope. of it. And switch hands. <clears throat> and now we've gone through all 12 points. We've got to all 12 points. Okay. Yay. <laughs> Amazing. That was so, so fun. And obviously for all of our beautiful <laughs> listeners, we hope you're still with us and you're trying, you're practicing this. And obviously what I love is it's, this is the thing I love. It's free. It's, it's with us. Everyone yeah. can do this. It's, it's natural. Um, a question for both of you. That was so fun. So. <laughs> For example, the like the woman who was afraid of um, claustrophobic, I know for me, for example, um, and I know many others, I'm not the only one, I had a bad experience flying once. And so for me, that fear, as much as I don't want it to be there, it can come up around flying. So for example, if that's an anxiety, would you actually, while you're tapping, say, like, I can actually feel it in my belly, like, mm. and I and I fly all the time because because I have to, um, but this will be a neat one to try. And I would say for anyone dealing with any, any kind of anxiety or fear or, or health issue, because I know you, you have stories about how this has helped people heal, heal yes. illnesses and, and conditions. Would you, so to give an example, either with the flying or um, if it's a health condition, would you say at the whole time, those 12 points like fear of flying, is that what you would, or? Sure. Well, let's let's just do a round with you. We won't be, we won't be, so you won't cure you of your fear of flying, but it may make some difference. So when, when, when the fear of flying comes up, what's the situation that you're in? Like, is it when you're going to the airport? Is it when you're sitting in the seat of the airplane? Is it when you're walking out to the airplane? When, let's just choose a place where, you really feel that fear? I feel it. Well, this is like, sounds so silly, but I feel it. I'm okay with takeoff. I feel it when we start getting the first bumps. Okay. So, in, so in the air, I'm, I'm usually okay. I'm okay getting to the airport. I'm fine sitting. I have my meditative music. It's when there's turbulence that something goes on. And, and listen, if you're next to me, you'll, I, I will grab your hand, hug you, and become your new best friend. That's what happens. <laughs> Dig okay. my, I will put my head on your shoulder, even if we don't know each other. This, I've made friends this way, but it is something. And I'm going to say for anyone listening, 
listen to this and take it and use it with whatever you're dealing with. And of course, then in the book, you give a lot of examples, but this is one I would love to not have that, that fear. And I don't like to use, um, personally don't want to use, you know, medicines or things like that. So, yeah. Okay. So, so, so give a reading. Imagine that you're in a plane and the turbulence is starting and you're rating okay. zero to 10 amount of distress you feel in your body mind right now. If it's not good, turb- I mean, if it's extreme turbulence, I would give it a 10. It's a 10. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so now we're going to start with finding with we before the capping, we do a preliminary, and that is on your chest on sore spots. So find sore spots on your chest. There, these are new lymphatic yeah. points. I was okay. just reading this today. Your thing on, I would literally, my eyes went to sore spots on chest. And I know there's others listening. Please, I hope you have to leave in comments. I, if you have a fear of flying, I love you. I'm with you. This is for you. Okay. <laughs> if I'm doing this, it's not comfortable. We're doing this together. I found the source. Yeah. Okay. So, so repeat after me. Even though I am terrified when the turbulence starts. Oh. Even, though, even though I'm terrified when the turbulence starts. I deeply love myself and accept my feelings. I deeply love and ex- myself and accept my feelings. Hmm. Again, even though I'm terrified when the turbulence starts. Even though I am terrified when the turbulence starts. Now hands over your heart chakra. I deeply love myself and accept my feelings. I deeply love myself and accept my feelings. And once more. Even though I'm terrified when the turbulence starts. Even though I am terrified when the turbulence starts. I deeply love myself and accept my feelings. I deeply love myself and accept my feelings. Top of the head. The turbulence starts. Okay, the turbulence starts. And I get terrified. And I get terrified. I want to hold on to someone. I want to hold on to someone. It's it's just so terrifying. It's pretty terrifying. I hate this feeling. I hate this feeling. I'm so sane in all these other parts of my life. I am so <laughs> sane in all other parts of my life. <laughs> true or false? Pretty I true. Pre- pretty true, pretty- yeah. Usually. Yeah, <laughs> um, but but I'm out of control. Yeah, I'm out of control, and I feel out of control. I cannot control this. I cannot control this. And I don't like that. I do not like that. I like to con- be in control. I like to be in control. I'm I moderate this show. I moderate the show. <laughs> I know how to be in control. I know how to be in control. I'm really good at it. I am really good at it. I, that's my comfort zone. That's my comfort zone. So not only am I feeling terror. Not only am I feeling terror. I'm feeling out of control. I'm feeling out of control. Continuing to chat here, we're going to do something totally different. Um, we're, we're, you're going to continue to tap as you close your eyes and open them and look down to the right, look down to the left, circle in one direction, circle in the other direction. Good. Now hum the first couple bars of Row, Row, Row Your Boat. Good. Count to five. One, two, three, four, five. And hum again. Good. And now we're going to do is call the sweep with your head straight across. So not moving your head, your head looking straight. Now with your head not moving, Bring your eyes down to the floor, so you're seeing as low as you can, and send energy out your eyes, the energy of all this turbulence out your eyes. And now 
Slowly move your eyes up, up the wall, sending the energy out your eyes as you move them all the way up to the ceiling to as high as you can see, sending the energy out through your eyes. And now back to tapping on the top of your head. That turbulence. That turbulence. It really scares me. It really scares me. And I can't control it. And I can't control it. And that doesn't fit my self-image. That does not fit my self-image. I'm, I'm very good at controlling things that need to be controlled. I am very good at controlling things that need to be controlled. I have teenage kids, for God's sakes. I have teenage <laughs> kids, for God's sakes. <laughs> <laughs> I know about establishing control. As fast as I know about establishing control. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't work when I'm on that airplane seat and turbulence starts. It does not work on the airplane when turbulence starts. And that that really does not that does not feel good. That does not feel good. And I'm Showing this in front of hundreds and hundreds of people. <laughs> Showing this in front of many, 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 many people. <laughs> and that's how much I want to get over this. Yeah, that is how much I want to get over this. I really want to be done with this. I really want to be done with this. And that book promises me that I can be. That book promises <laughs> me that I can be. Okay, take a breath. Back to the exact same scene where you're in the airplane and the turbulence is there. And give it a rating of 0 to 10. Now, to distress you feel right now? Um, that's so weird. I'm not... Let me, let me picture it's... I, this is so bizarre because I actually... It's like I'm not feeling it so much. I'm not feeling. I mean, I'm really like I'm not making this. I'm not feeling it in my stomach the way I felt it when we started. It, the feeling is massive fear, and I don't. I'm not feeling that fear. I would say I'm not liking it because I can imagine it, but I don't feel like I am going to like die here. Like I'm. I'm, I'm Something has shifted. That's amazing. Right. It feels like maybe a four. Mm -hmm. Right. So let's let's do one more round, okay? Okay. And my friends, okay. do this with me, please. We're doing this together. I don't want to be just doing this myself. So do it with me. This is going to help you. And you can sub in your own things, seriously. And if you have a fear of flying, this is for you. <laughs> yes. Okay. So when you're graded as a four, how do you know it's a four? How do you know it's still a four? Um, I mean, I'm super visual and I can feel the energy. I'm in the flight. I had a recent flight like this that dropped a lot in the turbulence. So I'm picturing, I don't really want to, but I'm picturing it. And I'm like, I don't like that feeling. Um, but it's not, I'm not feeling the fear that was there when we started not feeling the anxiety. It just feels like, oh, I don't like it, but I'm not getting the, the my stomach doesn't feel as triggered. Um, my heart, it's more of a, I'm just not really liking this, but it's not, not only do I not like this, but I'm having a panic attack type of feel is what usually happens. Right. Right. So, um, <clears throat> okay. So, um, by your chest, sore spots? Even though it's still a four. Even though it's still a four. I deeply love myself and accept my feelings. I deeply love myself and accept my feelings. Even though it's still a four. Even though it's still a four. I deeply love myself. I deeply love myself. And accept my feelings. And accept my feelings. Even though it's still a four. Even though it's still a four. I'm having to notice that it's not a 10. I'm happy to notice it's not a 10. 
So um, it's gone way down. It's gone way down. I'm starting to feel more in control of this. I am starting to feel more in control of this. I'm not sure what's happening in my brain. I'm not sure what is happening in my brain. But I sure like what's happening in my mind. I sure like what's happening in my mind. There's something about this tapping. There's something about this tapping. <laughs> that is different from when I just think about air travel. That's very different than when I just think about air travel. <laughs> so maybe it's doing something. Maybe it is doing something. It's, my experience is that my stomach feels different. My heart feels different. My experience is my stomach and my heart feel different. So I like that this number is going down. I like that this number is going down. It went down from a 10 to a 4. Went down from a 10 to a 4. And maybe it's still dropping. Maybe it's still dropping. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> but I'm feeling more empowered. I am definitely feeling more empowered. Continuing to tap here. Close your eyes. Open them. Look down to the right. Continuing to tap. Down to the left. Circle in one direction. Other direction. Hum. Count. One. Two, three, four, five. And then come again. Good. And now we're going to do the sweep where your head stays straight, but your eyes go down to the floor and send the energy out your eyes and bring your eyes slowly up, slowly up against the wall, sending the energy out towards the wall. Uh, up to as far up as you can see in the ceiling, sending the energies out. Tapping down the top of your head. I never thought, I never thought it would be kind of fun to get over my fear of flying. I never thought it would be kind of fun to get over my fear of flying. I never thought it would mean hitting myself. I never <laughs> thought it would mean this, hitting, tapping myself, ever. <laughs> my, my, mind, my mind doesn't know what to make of this. My mind does not know what to make of this. <laughs> Neither does the entire field of psychology. Neither does the entire field of psychology. But it works. But it works. And that's really good to see. That is really, really good to see. Because I feel empowered. I feel empowered. I feel less scared of flying. I feel less scared of flying. And that's why I'm doing this. That's why I'm doing this. So I'm kind of happy about that. I am very happy about that. <laughs> and I'm learning a tool that I can use any time I need to. And I'm learning, and we're all learning a tool to use anytime I want. Whether it's for fear of flying. Whether for, it's for fear of flying. Or reacting against my kids. Or reacting against my kids. <laughs> or any other issue that matters to me. Yeah, or anything else that matters to me. Take a breath. And again, go into that. Memory, make it as bad as it was, the turbulence, the dropping. I can give a rating of zero to ten, the amount of distress killing the body mind right now. Hmm. It's it's hovering. I would give it a 1.5. 1.5, okay. Good. I actually so. heard two, and I heard one, and I'm like, it's in the, I, I, yeah, it's about a one point. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's, yeah. that's flipping amazing. Okay. Friends, 
I'm doing this so this can help you. We do this together. That is, thank you for th that is amazing. Just I that. Just so my, yeah, my brain's like, what just happened? And my, <laughs> it's just, it's like, it's not there, the reaction, even though I'm not a person that loves roller coasters or dropping. Like, and that's just not my thing. I'm, I like other things, but so I'm not like, yay, I'm excited for the plane to drop. <laughs> it doesn't feel good, but it didn't, it's not, um, it's just fascinating. It's fascinating. It feels very different in my body, which is something I've done a lot of work around this. I just want to say a lot of therapy and talking and, and statements and affirmations. And I use meditation and lavender. I mean, seriously, like I'm, I've got this, I thought I had it down. And this is fascinating because it just feels different in my body, which is what I've been praying for, honestly. Yay. Yay. Yeah. Who knew? I didn't know we were going to be doing. So this was not planned, everyone. <laughs> this was not planned. Um, I think this is so powerful, though, because it's just, it's, it's like right here, right now it's showing it's proof and you don't have to, I don't have to, my brain doesn't have to understand it. It really did something. It's just amazing. It's beautiful. That was so powerful. <laughs> wow. wow. I'm going to like write to you both. Cause I'm flying soon out West. And I'm going to be like, get this. I was like, yeah cheering the plane like my my husband would be so excited he's got like claw marks nail marks in his hand he doesn't always fly with me but seriously i'm usually like rasping on and this is going to be like so neat to just yeah yeah i love it that was so cool yeah i thank you julie for having the courage to do that in front of everybody yes, yeah. yes. I, I felt it a little, vul it's okay. Vulnerability. It's, it's all right. It's a good, it's, it's like the, uh, the, the herbs we add to a salad. You got to bring them in. You got to bring it in. It's just what makes, I wanted to help people. And thank you both for, for just your beautiful spirit and energy. I, and, and doing that with me, that was really, um, I'm amazed. I'm actually kind of like, what just happened? I feel different. I feel different. And I mean, I, I tried hypnosis before. This is not like a new thing. Um, and it worked a little bit, not it's, it's always been physiologic, like that it's something shifted in the, the fear response, which is yes. just amazing. Yes. Yes. Wow. Energy. I really feel is, is the best, most natural healer there is energy, yeah. energy. Yes, beautiful. So yay for you. Yay. <laughs> yay for all of us. Before we close, which I got to be honest, like I could just, we'll have to do this again. Both of you are yes. just like delights to be here with. Your, your energy is speaking for yourself. So one of the things, this might even be a meridian or a thing, but I, about a couple of years ago, as I was doing an interview, what came to me was um, at the end, I call them heart flares, where your heart has a message to speak. I like to give our heart, your heart, the last, the mic. Um, if there's anything maybe I didn't ask you or that just feels like it's on your heart to share with our beautiful, beautiful community and listeners, is there a heart flare that either of you have before we, before we okay. close? Here's my heart flare. I, I'm just so glad. For anybody who has taken this to heart, and will, uh, and and will, and will try it, and move into the field of energy, uh, you know, even a little bit or a lot, it's going to change your life, and it'll really make you like life even better. That's your heart, Larry David. I appreciate <laughs> doing this with you, now. <laughs> <laughs> And, and I appreciate everybody who's watching. Yes. Uh, we really appreciate your attention and your time and big blessings to you for um, learning tools that are really empowering to, yes. to, to let your beautiful spirits shine. Yes. Beautiful. And that is the whole point of each of us being, of your being, your USU. It's really, it's connecting it all, the dots. It's really tapping into your energy and your beautiful energy. And I just, Donna, David, thank you both so much for being here, for shining, 
your light. It is like, I, I've just been basking in it. And I, I'm going to say to everyone, to, to you, our beloved listener, wherever you are, if you're watching, if you're listening, I hope that you will truly take these different practices, definitely get your hands on this book right here. I'm going to have all the information in the description as always uh, on YouTube. It's a party over there. We'll respond. I respond to all of your comments. If you have questions about this, um, if you have questions about what you saw, or maybe you're afraid of flying too, and you want to share that it helped you, please let me know. I would love to know I'm not the only one. Um, and we're just, we're grateful for you for taking the time to really honor your energy and to be here. This work is so sacred and it's for all of us. We, it's our birthright. And I just bow to you both, Donna and David. Thank you for your beautiful energy and hearts and wisdom. So much love. And Julie, Julie, thank you for your beautiful energy and wisdom. Thank you. And your vulnerability. It was all so beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> thank you and love to you. But okay, bye bye. My friend, I'm so grateful and honored to be here with you on your journey and being your USU. You. Thank you for watching this episode, for being part of this incredible community and this mission to really step into your light to your highest purpose. I believe that as we all do that, we all can really be our best selves and uplift consciousness and in humanity. So thank you. I also wanted to say that if you are looking for greater support right now, maybe you're having a health concern or you're looking to really step into that next version, best version of yourself, please come connect with me, whether it's for more resources or coaching or guidance. I would love to support you in any way that I can. Just go to julieresler.com. You can book a powerful one-on-one -on -one breakthrough session there. You can connect with me. I would love to meet you. I'd love to hear how I can be on this journey with you. And before I forget, if you'd like a little more of this good vibe uh, tribe and would like to digest these episodes with a high vibe community, just go to Facebook and look up the USU podcast community. You'll find us there. Love always. And thank you so much for taking the time and energy to truly stepping into your authenticity and being your USU.